This is my brand new pedal board setup for 2023 and I think that this is the best pedal board setup I've ever had in my life so far. Well, hey everyone, it's Gemma McTavay here. I just want to say thank you so much for tuning into this video and I hope that you have had a wonderful and happy new year. And if you don't know who I am, my name is Gemwell, but you can call me Gem and I am a session touring musician, a music producer and a music director here from Sydney, Australia. This is actually my very, very first video for uh, anything 2023 related. And I thought I'd share about my brand new pedal board setup that I have created for this year. So if you haven't seen my pedalboard video that I've had for 2022, I'm gonna link a video description down below so you can see how the backstory of this pedalboard came to be. So pretty much long story short, I've been working on this pedalboard ever since I was a young teenager. And ever since the rise of digital came, I got myself a Line 6 Helix and I've been using my Helix pretty much as my main rig. And ever since I was using my Helix as my main rig, whether I was touring or using it for studio sessions, I kind of missed using analog pedals as a way to tweak things on the fly during studio sessions or if I'm playing smaller gigs. Not that the Helix can't do that, but on the fly settings like in a studio session, it was nice to be able to tweak things on the fly with a real uh, pedal setup. So ever since the Line 6 HX Thump came out, I was like, man, I need to get this on a pedal board of mine. And the goal was to create a pedal board where I could have my analog pedals in, but have all the bonus features that I get with the Helix, such as amp simulations and extra modulation and delays and reverbs, and being able to use electric, acoustic, and bass guitar in my pedal board. So once it was time to put the pedal board together after getting my first HX Stomp, I contacted my friend Matt New from Pedal to the Metal and he did such an amazing job wiring up the pedal board with all custom cables for audio and the cables. He did a great job wiring it up and the pedal board layout was fantastic and everything was so secure and I was so grateful that I was able to use this pedal board for studio sessions and I was able to play it live and I even got to fly overseas with the pedal board and it was so rock solid, like nothing went wrong with the pedal board going back from the US and back to Sydney. And that's how you know that I was just like, yeah, I'm set with this pedal board. So over the last 12 months of using this pedal board and getting to experiment with different gear, there has just been few pieces of gear where I was like, man, if I had this pedal on my main board, this would be so awesome to have. So that's where the idea of wanting to swap out a few pedals came from. And when I got the opportunity to redo my pedal board with my friends at GSUS4, after they offered to let me try out some brand new cables, which we'll get into later, I was like, all right, cool. Let me swap out a few pedals and try them out on my big board as the pedals I had on my small board that I just did. And if you wanna see how I get my guitar tones, I have a video also in the link down below. Those pedals really just made me feel like, oh man, this would take my tone to a whole nother level that I didn't even know that my tone could get to because I was already satisfied with all the pedals that I had. But sometimes you find pieces of gear where it could improve your workflow just that extra one or five or 10% and it could create a whole world of new creativity and ideas and sounds and better workflow. So that's what I went for. And let me show you some of the stuff that I replaced. And it's pretty much these pedals over here. And I wanted to start off with the two main pedals which provided me with the overdrive tones and distortion tones that I love and that other people love hearing me use. And it's been the MI Audio Crunchbox Distortion version two, an original one from 2008, and this Jetta Jet Drive version two. I don't know what it is, but version two sound pretty awesome. Uh, this Crunchbox uh, was actually the very first pedal that my older brother gave me back in 2008. I was 10 years old and he handed me this MI Audit Crunchbox Distortion, so I'm very, very grateful for my older brother for kickstarting my whole guitar gear journey. And this was also from my older brother, uh, which actually came in around 2012. And this has been my main overdrive pedal that I have used for the last 11 years of my life. And I honestly could not find a better overdrive pedal, a, a better two-in-one overdrive pedal than this pedal. You can talk about the Protein and all these dualist new pedals that come out, 
But for me, nothing has beat this pedal. This is the pedal which provided me with what I look for in an overdrive pedal. You can get the most amazing edge of breakup turns with this pedal till really nice uh, rhythm turns. And when you put them both together, it creates such a gorgeous lead tone. It's amazing and there's nothing like it. But ever since I met Dave from Vander Guitars who made me some incredible pedals. Dave's an amazing guitar luthier by the way. Check him out at vandaguitars.com.au. These pedals kind of did what these pedals did, but better. And I am so blown away because it was so hard for me to find a better two-in-one overdrive pedal until I tried out this guy. And it was amazing just to see what my crunch box could do with extra buttons. So this is a mystery drive, it's called a mystery drive for now, which is an incredible two-in-one overdrive pedal. And this is the Carl Martin Plexitone clone that was made by Dave. And it's pretty much what my crunch box could do, but with an extra gain channel and a boost. And I was just like, I gotta have that on my board. So those are my new overdrive pedals for the board. And in terms of fuzz, I've been using the JHS Mindy Foot Fuzz since 2016 and I absolutely love this pedal. I love the thickness, I love the richness. I honestly got this pedal because as a guitar player, I just wanted a fuzz pedal that could fit on a pedal board like this. And this was a no-brainer. It sounds amazing, it feels amazing. But when I tried this, uh, like a BC-108 fuzz face type fuzz from Dave from Band of Guitars, it absolutely blew me away. The touch sensitivity, the tones you get when you roll your volume knob back, and the dynamics, it was just like, man, this is a fuzz I want. It does the Hendrix thing so well, and more. Uh, I love the fact that it has an input gain, the gain, the volume, and a, uh, a low cut switch, which is absolutely genius. So that is what the JHS pedal uh, got replaced with. It got replaced with this Vanna Guitars uh, BC-108 Fuzz, which you can actually buy on this website. And in terms of other overdrives, for the whole year I was using this Fox Pedal Vixen uh, Dimensional Drive. Absolutely incredible overdrive. An amazing transparent overdrive, it, an overdrive that really feels and responds so well with your tube amp and even with a modeler. It sounds amazing. I love the two different um, clipping diodes you get with this pedal gives it a different feel and an overall different shape of tone. But after I replaced the Jet Drive with the Mystery Drive, what the Jetta did so well is the blue channel of the pedal has a bit of a mid bump. Not quite like a Tomb Screamer, but it gave you enough mid range where your rhythm tones sounded nice and thick and your lead tones were really rich. And I'm glad that I had this Keeley Modded TS9 which was originally from my brother. I wound up buying it off a friend of mine and I, I, I am floored by it. After doing my mini pedal board video demo and throwing this pedal on, I'm like, man, I need to have this pedal on my main board because you just can't beat a Keely Modded TS9. It is so good for solos and it's so good for rhythm tones. Just absolutely incredible. And in terms of reverbs, I have been a huge fan of the Boss RV5, especially with the modulate setting. It is just something to die for and a sound that can't be replicated. However, I got in contact with Junior from Jet Pedals. A very, very kind-hearted and incredible genius with pedals and I love what he does for the community. He introduced me to the Jet Pedals Revelation Reverb 2.0 and it blew me away. I'm just like, oh my gosh. This is such an amazing pedal which does so much in a little footprint and I've got to have it on my board. The fact that it's got three different reverb modes with different presets and it sounds absolutely lush. It does this but more and I was just like man, the options that I could have without having to sacrifice so much space on a pedal board is something that I need to have. So that is what has changed on the pedal board in terms of pedals. And in terms of cables, let me show you what cables I am using on my pedal board as I filmed some things down at GSUS4 in Rydalmere as they redid this whole board using these special cables.
so here we are inside GSUS 4. My favorite music store in all of Sydney. There's my board. And these are some of the new cables that is gonna go on it. And here's Kang. Kang, say hi. Twergeer Designs. Interesting. It's pretty wild. So I'm back here again at GSUS 4. Nice and early before the uh, customers come in. And there's Tommy. There's Kang. And these are the cables that are on my board, which we'll show later. But I wanted Kang to tell us what? about this cable. <laughs> what is this? Oh, this is um, Tour Gear Designs cables, and uh, they are Canadian company. And uh, it's been made in Serbian factory, so it's not made in China. And also, each cable comes with signature. This, if you can see this. Oh, so like a all, hand signature. Like every single cable like this um, is all tested, inspected, and signed with a date. So the cable is good to go always and uh, comes with the warranty. So if you have any problems, just you can bring it back. And it's a low profile. I can see that. It's like this flat, low profile thing. Is, I, I actually really like the, the flat square kind of cables right now, they actually sound really good. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Let me start off with my signal chain. The chain starts off with my guitar going into the passive input of the Goodwood audio interface. Then out from the interface, it goes into the passive out, into the first pedal in the chain, which is the Vanda Guitars BC108 fuzz. So here's my clean tone. Pretty good. And here's the fuzz. Super dynamic, so awesome. Gets that classic fuzz face thickness with that volume control dynamics. Pretty awesome. Uh, next up is a you know typical wah. Can't beat that. GCB ninety five, amazing. And then after the wah, it goes into the passive input of the interface. And out of the passive output, it goes into the Empress Compressor. So here is no compression. And here's my turn with the compressor. It gives 
my tone a bit of a fatter sound and it pushes the amps a little bit more and it gives it more note separation and clarity. I love it and it keeps my dynamics still there having the 50% blend. So I'm going to keep the compressor on at all times because that's how I usually run my tone. My, this Empress compressor never turns off even with gain and high gain. And the next pedal on the chain is my Moore 10 Octave Mark 1, the actual Pog clone. <laughs> Buy that with some fuzz. <laughs> Super fun. <laughs> and next up on the chain is the Vander Guitars Mystery Drive, unnamed overdrive, but this is the blue channel. Uh, here's without it on. And here is the blue side engaged. Here's the red side. And here's both sides on together. Awesome. <laughs> and after the Mystery Drive, here is the Tube Screamer. Sounds amazing, the Keely Modded TS9. Here it is with single coils. <laughs> freaking awesome. So next up is the Karl Martin Plexitone clone also by Vanda Guitars. In the first channel, the crunch channel, I have it set up to the lowest gain possible and it's got this really nice plexi crunch. <laughs> I have it slightly just before uh, 12 o'clock and it sounds nice and thick. Loud and rowdy that one, so you gotta be careful with that pedal. 
So after the Plexitone clone, we have the Jackson Audio Prism on as my main solo boost pedal, or if I wanted the clean boost, here's what it sounds like without it on. <laughs> Here it is on. Then after the Jackson Audio Prism, we have the TC Electronic Nova Delay. Such a wonderful delay pedal. So I've wired the Nova in mono because I don't really need stereo delays. I like to have stereo reverbs rather than stereo delays. I just like my delays to stay in front and give me the repeats that I want nice and clearly going forward. So the the delay, the Nova delay goes into the front of the stomp before all the amps and the extra modulation effects of the stomp. And my Jet Pedals Revelation reverb goes into the effects loop of the stomp, the effects loop. Um, and here's what it sounds like with the Jet Pedals Revelation reverb as my main verb. <laughs> Pretty awesome. The fact that I have the reverb in the effects loop, I can move it either before or in front of the amp depending on what effect I'm going for. And the last pedal in the chain before going stereo out back into the Goodwood audio interface is the Line 6 HX Stomp, which I'm just using for mainly amps, uh, delays, extra reverbs, and modulations. So here is just a AC30 type preset that I have where I always keep this uh, analog delay on in the background and a bit of reverb, uh, some chorus and the button where I have some extra big whole reverb going on in the background. <laughs> Thank you. 
So that concludes today's pedalboard video. I hope you guys really enjoy that and learnt something and hope you guys learnt what goes on a little bit in my brain when it comes to setting up this pedalboard and what goes on with my play style. This by no means is a worship pedalboard video, even though a lot of the content I've been putting out is worship related. No, I believe that you can use whatever pedals you have to work with whatever genres that you play, whatever session you play. I believe that uh, you can make your better board as versatile as you want to play whatever kind of music, even worship music. A lot of these worship videos, uh, worship pedal board videos that get made a lot of the time, they annoy me so much because I'm just like, man, you can use your pedal board for so much more different kinds of music. It's not like people made specific pedals to be like, oh yeah, this is designed to sound like the Holy Spirit is coming down, you know, or this overdrive is the perfect overdrive for all you church players. Because in reality, guitar tones in church is pretty much just rock and roll tone with more reverb and delay drenched into it. It's not that complicated, just a nice clean amp with on the edge breakup with a bit of transparent overdrive and another mid-range boosted pedal to make you jump out of the mix. Nothing complicated. Um, but I believe that you have the ability to use whatever pedals you have to suit your play style, to suit the music that you need. And uh, man, I'm, I'm so happy with this pedal board because it really reflects everything that I'm going for tone-wise, all the gain structures uh, that I go for, for whatever music I get called for, whether I'm playing a funk gig, or a, a, a gig where I, I'm on a cruise ship and I gotta play, you know, hundreds of songs in different styles from pop to funk to jazz to blues to, I don't know, whatever comes on, metal. <laughs> this pedal board does everything that I want it to do in a, a studio setting and in a live setting where I'm not jumping around uh, using much presets and I just want to be creative. So that is my pedal board. And if you want to see more of what I do, check out my website at www.jumamectivatemusic.com And if you want to check out more Line 6 Helix and HX Stomp presets that I make, head out to multitracks.com And I have new Helix and HX Stomp presets that I'm currently working on, so please stay tuned for that. I'm really excited for them to come out. Uh, until then, you guys have yourselves an amazing day and peace out. <laughs>